day. Tim with Perkins Roofing here. I am on the south side of our Fisher Island project. You can see most of the tiles are done. The hip and the ridges. We've started doing the cement now. And we have Brow Premix Mortar for the cement. That's gonna fill these voids in the hips and the ridges. Now that these tiles are on, on this side. So we're touching up the tiles now. The tiles are all on, just doing cement. You can see the tiles on these cupola structures. Since the last video, we have also coated all these cupola structures. So all these cupolas have two coats of PB70, which is an acrylic waterproofing painted on the structures. And then we repainted over the acrylic coating with the Fisher Island color paint yeah. so that everything matches. So they have custom colors on all of these buildings. And you can see that we opened up these louvers on the inside. This is a polyurethane coating on the inside that we've been painting these with. So you can see we painted up the walls on the inside here, painted up the vents. We have to reattach the vents where these were just bare concrete before. This is a polyurethane, very thick stuff. You can see on the inside of these cupola and chimney structures. And these windows are insane. Like look at what these windows look like when they come out. See how thick this thing is? This thing is huge. That's the window for these. The chimneys are just screens like that. Those are the cupolas, the ones with the enclosures. So I'll show you what the chimneys look like real quick. You can see right here a tile detail on the saddle. It's really important on any chimney detail to have a saddle. If you don't have a saddle, the water is gonna get stuck right back here and it's not gonna deflect around the edges of the chimney or whatever superstructure you might have on your roof. So it's very important to put something like the saddle behind any structure on the roof so that water can deflect around the structure on either side. And you see the inside of the chimney here is also coated with the polyurethane. This has the waterproofing on it and the paint. And then we have these bird screens on this one rather than the louver windows. So that's what the inside of these looks like now that we've done all of this coating and painting on the south side. This is the inside we have, we just have to remove our blue tape. Of the one, I think it's video part two or three, you'll see that I put the phone in here and we had this giant box there. Uh, it, was, it was dead, that fan. So that we took out and we coated the inside here and blue taped it because this was just bare concrete before. This polyurethane is gonna protect the concrete on the inside. And we went up the wall transitions to protect the L's, you see like right here, our wall transitions. I can't fit my other hand in here, it's not big enough. But this wall here, this transition, you wanna protect the joint between the wall and the deck. And it's a very important lesson to learn as a roofer to make sure that anything that touches the roof is also waterproof. Because water can come in through things like this, through this, and anytime water comes in from anywhere, it's always the roofer. So you always want to make sure that you do anything within your power to take care of everything. You see right here, we have this area here. We have to do our end cap mortar on the end. Come down here, you see the guys also behind me finishing the center tower, which last time we were here, we were walking on the old tiles. Now they're all done and we're almost at our detail point. But right here you can see we're gonna have like a mortar mound almost which is just like a mortar end cap on that hip. As the guys are working below me over here on the center tower, finishing up the metal details just like last time when they were there. The last time they were on the north side, not the center. So you can see we're making really good progress in two weeks on this building with all these tiles done, all the barrel tile done on the south side. Just need to do our mortar details now. I think it's looking good.
amazing view here on the flat roof. You can actually see, because we haven't closed this off yet, you can see straight down through the tile so you can see what it looks like down the cap with the eave closure piece in there. And you see, this is actually good for breathability of the roof for this to be open. That's why they have those weep holes anyway right there. So what this means is this is gonna air out really well, this roof. You don't have to puncture your own weep holes with concrete. Right here, you can see this rake detail. See how the rake tiles come across on this side too. So we have one cap tile here and then the rake tile comes right here. That's what the rake detail looks like. Still gonna be some concrete too. So down on this section on the lower wing, See, we've got our coping cap installed now. Copper coping cap, stainless steel fasteners right here. You wanna put this pretty much on the top of any wall, a coping cap. It's gonna protect the wall from water hitting the top of the wall and cracking out. You can see behind me that coping cap. All custom made in copper. So coping caps are great for any wall, parapet wall or otherwise wall protection on a roofing system. Here we are now on the center section. We have this flat roof, which is gonna be a pain. We're gonna be starting this pretty soon. But you can see we have these cylinder blocks here with all these pipe penetrations all tying in. Like, I'm barely even like flying back here. You see all this stuff we have to deal with on this thing? This is not a fun roof to do. You gotta get back here and climb in and just see all this stuff, all this equipment. These are the types of roofs that are a nightmare. You might say, well, it's so small, it's so small. But look at all these details. that to be sealed in. You can even get back there. And this actually cuts through this hallway here into this other section of fly roof. Kind of the same thing over here. You see all these blocks, concrete blocks, penetrations in the ground. We have to wrap up all this stuff. So, like, I can't even get in here. Look at all this stuff. So, this is what you call a nightmare roof. See all these things on the ground? All these things need to be flat. There's a little box that's not eight inches up with springs. Gonna be a nightmare right here at this little thing. But these are these are the worst little types of flat roofs here. These things are such a pain. You'll spend weeks just on something like that. When you get to kill a big roof like this one in two weeks on its own. Like last time we were here, all these tiles were here and everything. So you can see a better view of the flat roofs. Like we did all this roof. All tried in with the 30 pound paper, torn off everything in two weeks. Less than two weeks because we didn't even start last time I was here. I bet these little flat roofs take longer than this whole giant tile roof here. That's it. That's how crazy it is. This is a custom skylight right here that's going to be replaced during the project. We're waiting for the sand to get fabricated, but this thing's going to get replaced. You can see our new copper in, in the walls here with our MTS. around all these bases before we put our second layer of MTS on top. See how tight that fit is. I talked in some of the other videos about these returns and how they're a pain in the ass to get into. And you have to custom kind of cut the metal to get them to fit in the corners too.
right, look at that fit. You just gotta play around with it until you get it. It's one of those things. You might have seen this on the drone videos, but we have these little roofs here. You can see they're only like four feet wide. You're not gonna wanna walk on that when you're 80 feet up or whatever. So these things we're gonna work on via high reach machines. So we're gonna be down there with high reach machines next time we do the video. I'll try to get on one so you can see how it operates. But you gotta get on these little eyebrows here to do these roofs too, or on the side. So if you watch the drone videos, you'll be able to see these eyebrow roofs when we come around the back side each time with the drone. And there's little balconies below them. So you gotta reach in to hit them. You can see the polyurethane coating going in on the insides of these cupolas. So polyurethane on the insides, acrylic on the outsides, and then paint. We talked about this cooling tower spitting chemicals out and damaging this coping cap here and just closing it down on that side. On this side, what we did was we put cap sheet. It should be more moisture resistant than the TU Plus. And you can see, this is already patina this metal here. But we put cap sheet here to help protect, I guess, the moisture from the cooling tower on this north side. It was already doing some damage to our paper right here. So you can see here, all the double plywood going down. Got to do a lot of custom cuts with all these little valleys all over the place. See all these little triangles. See here's the first sheet, and there's the second sheet popping up. Here's the second sheet right here, popping up. There's our old 30 pound paper on here. Just we're doing 30 pound on this roof, grandfathered over instead of the new poly anchor. So you can see we're doing a lot of work here. I don't want to get repetitive in the videos. A lot of the details I've already shown you in some of the other videos. So please check out the entire series, the entire Fisher Island series, if you want to see all the details on these roofs. I'm trying to get to every detail, at least different details in different days, depending on what we're doing. So you can see us doing something. So you see we're unloading tile on one section still. We have uh, coating of the interior and exterior cupolas going on. We're getting the center roof completely dried in. The north roof is now completely dried in with the TU Plus and the MTS. So secondary water barrier system. This is a 30 year roof that they're getting here. And then the tiles are all finished on the north section. We're just cleaning everything up today so that we can start our mortar install tomorrow. While we're also, you can see marking lines here for our tiles on this north, large north roof. So we're marking our lines, getting ready for tiles. We're getting the tiles delivered on the north side. So we'll be starting those north, north tiles soon. This should be completed within the next half a week or a week, probably a week. All of this will be completed on this side. So when we come back here, we're probably gonna be finishing up the lobby and that's it. We're gonna be changing all these copper pieces still, painting some wood, and then tiles. Most of the roof at this point is just gonna be tiles. Probably there's gonna be one more video where we're doing some dry in when we're doing the eyebrows. So I'll show you what it's like on the high reaches doing those roofs on the eyebrows. But besides that, at this point, most of the dry in work is complete. This roof is getting close to 100% waterproof now at this point with this new layer. So all we're gonna be looking at is tiles, tiles, tiles moving forward 
and we'll just keep little update videos going instead of doing the in-depth 30 minute long videos where we show you everything that's going on because I showed most of those videos or those details in other videos. So until next time, if you need anything, give us a call for Miami Dade, Broward and the Keys at 305 MIA Roof. And then if you are in uh, Palm Beach, St. Lucie or Martin counties, north as we call it, <laughs> so far north, Treasure Coast. If you're up that way, give us a call at 561-559-ROOF and we will be happy to meet your roofing needs, whether it's residential, commercial, we do roof repairs, we do roof maintenance, gutters, sheet metal, waterproofing, concrete restoration, impact windows, we do it all exterior side. Give us a call, Perkins Roofing, at those numbers. Until next time, peace.